This is Jonathan Agioff here for Pro Boxing Fans. I'm up here in Sheffield today, one day out now, one night out now, from Martin J. Ward, the former British Commonwealth and European Super Featherweight uh, Champions fight uh, against Jesus Amparan. Martin, how are you feeling? One day out? Yeah, I'm feeling great. You know, waiting today, as you know, and um, everything went well. Training's gone great. I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll now. What do you know about uh, Jesus? Uh, he's only had one defeat. Um, how difficult a prospect is this tomorrow night? But how ready are you feeling? Yeah, of course. He's going to be. He's going to come. He's hungry. He's a young, hungry fighter. He's 23 years of age. He lost. He lost once when he boxed in Canada. Um, you know, from his record, he, he packs a punch. He's 16 wins. He's got 14 KOs. So he's going to be. A, he's going to be a challenge for me here tomorrow night, and one that I'm, I'm looking forward to. Now, as we spoke off camera, you were supposed to be out in Miami a week ago, uh, but you're in Sheffield tomorrow night. Talk me through why that uh, fight didn't happen in Miami. A uh, big enough fight didn't, just didn't present itself uh, for the Miami show, so um, it made sense to, to move the fight to, to this, um, this card. And I'm only too happy to be in the, in the Steel City and uh, really looking forward to putting on a good show tomorrow night. I mean, talk about, sort of, go back to last year, your two wins last year. Um, how, how would you reflect on it? A bit, frustra bit frustrating to be honest. Uh, time I've, I've been staying in the gym all year round, and you know the, the, the big fights was not there. So I've obviously I've had to stay busy. A couple of fights, I've done a six and an eight rounder, but I've been in the gym 12 months of the year, and and, and really working on my craft with my trainer. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show the work that we've been doing behind closed doors. I never had, a, I had the fights to, to show to show a little bit more that we've been been doing and working on. And uh, Tomorrow, tomorrow night, you're going to see the best version so far of Martin J. Ward. I mean, if you win tomorrow, and I'm sure you're expecting to win, um, you're ranked seven, I believe, by the by the IBF. Um, we'll talk about who the IBF champion is now because it changed obviously last week to Jojo Diaz. But how close do you reckon you are to a world title shot? I want them now. I'd, I'd fight one tomorrow. I'd, I'd happily replace uh, Amparan, yeah. Amparan with, with one of the world champs. Um, I'm ready to go. It's just um, just there's a lot. Of politics when you get to the, the top end of, sort of the game and it's just getting me in the right position. I'll get there this year. This year I'll have my chance and I'll, I'll take it with both hands. Don't worry about that. Now I'm sure you would have watched last week in Miami, yeah. Jojo Diaz. Um, quite, I guess it was a shock in beating Tevin Farmer, uh, especially with that cut, that quite yeah. gruesome cut, cut he had. Um, yeah, how do you assess his performance? I thought he boxed really well to be honest, Joseph Diaz. Uh, I thought Farmer very flat performance to be honest. He looked tired from from the get-go and a bit sloppy. He didn't look his usual sharp sharp self, but he was in he's in with a good operator and I favoured Farmer before the fight to, to win, but I knew it was gonna be a tough fight. It wasn't no it wasn't no gimme, so uh, you know it wasn't the biggest upset of the year. Uh, Joseph Diaz is a good fighter. So presumably you've got him him in mind, you had one look at him, as we mentioned you're highly ranked by the IBF. Yeah. So um, yeah, so he's obviously on the radar, isn't he? Yeah, of course. Yeah, he's the champ. Whoever's got a belt, mate, is on the radar. That's the, that's the way it is in 2020. I want my shot at a world title. I'll get it this year, and I'll, I'll I'll take the title back to and bring it back to England. I mean, are you only looking at sort of the IBF route? I mean, obviously no. Jamel Herring is probably set to fight Carl Frampton. So do you yeah. see any other route? I mean, the WBA regular. The WBA regular, um, Rennie Alvarado. Um, he's with Golden Boy. Who work alongside uh, matching on the zone? So uh, that's 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 realistically that's that's the champ I'm going to be getting, and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll get a shot at him this summer. Uh, just going back to Jamel Herring, um, obviously titled to fight Carl Frampton. How would you see that fight playing out, especially if he was to come to um, Belfast? Um, do you know what? I haven't really thought too much into it. I, I know there's been a bit of talk about it, and they're saying it's going to be in Belfast this summer. Make for a great fight. Jamel's uh, he's an Olymp Olympian. U he's on the USA team, with Olympian, and, and Carl's Carl's a great fighter. He's, he's been a, he's been a great fighter and a world class fighter for years now. And uh, it'd be a great fight. I'll I'll be looking forward to watching the fight. I couldn't really couldn't really back I couldn't really back against Carl to be honest with that guy because he's a good fighter. He's he's got the amateur pedigree now, but he's no. I don't, he's not a superstar. He's, he's, a, he's a good world champion, and uh, uh, if the fight ever got presented to me, I'll, I'll take it with both hands. I mean, you only have one loss in your career, obviously, to James Tennyson, who's up at lightweight. Is that someone, someone you want to avenge? A defeat you want to avenge? Of course, if 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 it made sense and 
a little, little bit later on down the line and I, and I went to lightweight or something like that there, um, I would love to fight him again. But at the minute, he's doing his thing at lightweight and I'm doing mine at super featherweight. And I'm, I need to get my shot and my chance at a world title at this weight. Um, so I'm a super featherweight, to be honest. I'm a super featherweight, so I'm not really a lightweight. I, I can do super featherweight quite comfortable when I do it right. I didn't do it right for that for that particular fight, but no excuse, the man beat me on the night and uh, fair play to him and good luck to him in the future. Until he meets me again. <laughs> Before we um, talk about, obviously we don't, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself, and I'm mentioning all these names, but obviously you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. Um, what is your sort of prediction going in for tomorrow? For tomorrow night you're going to see an exciting performance from me and uh, I think you're going to see the best. This, this guy comes Comes and, he comes, he's going to be, he's coming to have it, mate. He's coming to knock me out, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I'm, uh, my plan is to knock him out. Simple as there's two hungry guys, both at, both at, uh, fight at a good level, and uh, it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a good, exciting fight. He's a big puncher. He's a Mexican. They're all tough, and they're all, they're all, they're all going to come in shape and stuff like that. So uh, he's, he, he's a typical Mexican as well. He's, he's tough, and he chucks a lot of the typical Mexican shots off the left. Off his left, he loves his left hook. Um, I'm going to annihilate all this on fight night tomorrow night. A little tweaks that people's not, not even going to notice. I'm going to be too sharp for him, too explosive, and going to get the job done in style. Your stable mate, John Doherty, is also on the bill. Um, rising Scottish um, yes. star. Uh, yeah, how have you seen his pro journey so far? Obviously, I'm beaten, I believe yeah. seven fights. Yeah, what, what have you made of him? The doc, the doc's a beast. I'm telling you, he trains like a beast in the gym and uh, inspiring. He's he's definitely one for the future. I'm telling you, he's he's going to take some time. He's, I think uh, he's ready for a step up after this fight. Like hoping, hopefully everything goes all okay for him and all well. He'll be um, he'll be on a title chase soon. He's a uh, he's a guy who can move now. He's he's mature. He's strong. He trains hard. And exciting times for the duck. He's a beast. I'm telling you, you're all going to see. Well, you're all seeing anyways. He's stopping them all. He's stopping all the guys anyways. But when when the opponents step up and they get a bit better class, you're going to see a lot more from him. He's a good fighter, great fighter. I do just want to take away from uh, your stable and tomorrow, and I do want to talk about a fight announced today: Daniel Dubois and Joe Joyce uh, on BT Sport pay per view. Uh, what do you make of that fight? It's a great fight for the British fans. A really, really good fight. Th to be honest, I didn't think it was going to get made this. I didn't think it was going to get made for April, but they, they've always they've been always put together like they were, it was going to happen one way or another but uh, I'm excited to watch a fight definitely uh, Dubois is a former Repton boy as well um, Joe Joyce is a big beast he used to be on a GB squad with him and he's a, he's a big monster um, it's, gonna be, it's making for a great fight two good hungry uh, fighters and they're going to they're gonna bring their all on fight night and it's going to be exciting isn't it? it's got to be exciting it can't not be exciting Do you lean towards anyone at this early stage? It's going to be a good fight. I'm going to sit on the fence, to be honest. So I've got respect for the two lads. Um, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it now. And coming up even sooner than that, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, the rematch. Um, yeah, how do you see that second fight going? I'm sure you're going to lean towards uh, Tyson. Yeah, Tyson's going to... He's going to piss this... He's not going to piss it like... But, no, he could piss it. He could piss it over 12 rounds, like. but he's bringing it home. The Gypsy King is going to bring it back for us. He's going to do it, yeah. A million percent. Do you see him knocking him out? Who Tyson knocking them? Um, he could do. He could do. Like personally, myself, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna do it over the rounds. He's gonna be even more frustrating than he was last time and more better. Is it, I think he's a little bit heavier now, is he as well? He could listen. He could. He could obviously catch Wilder, but Wilder could catch him as well. He's a big, big puncher. He's a dangerous man. But how can you back against the Gypsy King? You can't. <laughs> and you gotta love him as well. He's a. He's, he's a character. And, uh, He's done so well from coming back from all the mental depression and and every all the adversity that's been took his way. He's got through it all and he's a he's an he's, he's come, becoming an icon in the sport. He's a great he's a great character and a great man. Final one before I let you go. What is your motivation? Um, big fight coming up. Obviously chasing world titles. But apart from that, what motivates you? My family motivate me to do well in the sport. Um, I've always done it for them. Uh, it's for my family, my family name, and. Uh, been in this sport a long time. I've been boxing since I was a kid, seven, eight years of age, and, and I love it. I love it. I love to win. I love to compete with the best. And uh, you know, my family and my, my people uh, they motivate me so so much to do well in the sport. Okay, Martin. Anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, just a quick shout out to my sponsors uh, for all the help they give me. 
NCIS Health and Safety Training Company, Meridian Construction Services, Adam Lightower, and Golden Base Jewelers in uh, in Baslin, Ricky Judd. They're uh, they're a great help help to me in camp, and that's, that's how I can live this life. That these the back of these guys, and I can live the the professional fighter's lifestyle over them. Um, you know, I'm a full time full time athlete, and and they get the bills covered. So. Um, I can't, uh, can't thank them enough. Appreciate it. Martin J. Ward, thanks very much for giving us your time and uh, best of luck tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.